Hi folks, today's topic is the uh, continuation of lines in the plane. So our goal is to be able to sketch lines given different forms. So if you remember our forms from last time, and then we're going to talk a little bit about parallel and perpendicular lines. So sketch a graph of the following linear functions. So if you remember, this form is called slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form tells us two things. It tells us the slope, and it tells us the y-intercept. And we use the letter B to indicate the y-intercept. So our slope is whatever is connected to x. Now, 99% of the time, it will be written in this format, y equals mx plus b. But sometimes the b could be put out front. This would happen especially if this was, let's say, a positive 4. They'll put that 4, subtract, because they don't usually like to have uh, negatives floating out front if they can avoid it. In this case, either, either way you arrange it, you're going to have a negative out front. So anyway, this number out front is our slope, negative 3 halves. Then the other number is our B value, which is known as the y-intercept. I think about it as B as in beginning, because that's where you want to begin your graph. So I'm going to begin my graph down here at negative 4. And then if you remember, our saying for slope is rise over run. So now you can put this negative. you got to be a little careful here. We talked about this last time as well. I'm going to grab a different color. Negative 3 halves. Is that equal to negative 3 over 2? Or is it equal to 3 over negative 2? Or is it equal to negative 3 over negative 2? So hopefully you've written those down and crossed out which ones don't aren't true. And it's only the last one. The last one is not true. Um, Think about it this way. How many negatives? One. How many negatives? One. How many negatives? One. So if you only have one negative in a division problem, you're going to have an overall negative value. This problem, how many negatives? A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So this is the only one that's not legal. No good. I'm going to cross that one out. So that means that I can attach this negative to the top, make it a negative three rise, or I can attach it to the negative two and make it a negative two run. I always try to attach it to the top first, so I'm going to rise negative 3, and I run out of room, so I see that wasn't the best choice. So the reverse of down 3, forward 2 is up 3, and then back 2. Up 3, and then back 2. Up 3, and then I run out of room. So that's enough. That's as many points as I can get. Technically, you only need two points, if you remember back to your geometry days. Two points to find a line. I just draw as many as can fit on the graph. Okay, that's uh, slope-intercept form. Next is called standard form. Uh, standard form is, we call it the cover-up method. What you're really doing is you're finding intercepts. You're finding the x-intercept and you're finding the y-intercept. So in other words, you're plugging in 0 for x and you're plugging in 0 for y. The way I remember it is I cover up. When x is 0, that's going to be 9 times 0, so this is basically just gone. So it says negative 6y equals negative 18. Well, then y must be positive 3. Then when I put a 0 in for y, that's going to kill this, including the minus sign. So that says 9x equals negative 18. That means that if I solve that, x equals negative 2. And then I go ahead and graph these. 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 2, 0. The only thing you have to be careful of is which way you're moving. Make sure that you're... Drawing the x-intercept on the x-axis and the y-intercept on the y-axis. Then grab your straight edge, play connected dots, and you're good to go. All right, so the, la the next two are just a reminder. These are going to be, think about it this way. If x equals negative 3, that's asking you to find all the points that have an x value of negative 3. Well, there's lots and lots of points that have an x value of negative 3. So I want to indicate all of those. The easiest one to find, though, is the one that's on the x-axis. I like to think about this as, okay, if x equals negative 3, that means I have to hit the x-axis at negative 3. How many y values? There are none. So that means I should never hit the y value. So what's the only way to draw a line that never hits the y? It's to draw it completely vertical. So it's parallel to the y-axis. Now look at every single one of these points that I'm drawing. These all have an x value of negative 3, and then they have different y values. 
and those different y values is why we don't since there's so many different y values that's why we don't have a y value in our equation and then the last one sort of probably got the idea by now y equals two that means i have to hit the y axis at two since there is no x variable it should never have an x value should never hit the next x axis, I should say. So I'm going to draw a what we call horizontal line. So that should be old news. You've seen that probably ever since middle school or maybe even before how to draw a line. So like I said, the second part of this is talking about parallel and perpendicular lines. What colors? Let's go with a nice orange and a purple. So this is a theorem. A theorem is not a theory. A theorem is a mathematical fact proven to distinct lines. Distinct means different. So two distinct lines are parallel, probably my favorite math word because right in the middle of the word parallel are two parallel lines. Two distinct lines are parallel if and only if, and this is our shorthand for if and only if, that's not a misspelling, IFF shorthand for if and only if. Two distinct lines are parallel if and only if they have Okay, now if I need my lines to be parallel, if this slope was negative 3 halves, what would be the slope of a line that had to be perfectly parallel to it? It would also have to be negative 3 halves. So two distinct lines are parallel if and only if they have equal slopes. And then our second theorem. Two distinct lines are perpendicular if and only if they have Now, it takes two things to be perpendicular. So if you're parallel, you just have to have exactly the same slope. If you're perpendicular, so think about it. This line has a slope that's negative. If I need to meet, perpendicular means I have to have a line that meets this at a perfectly 90 degree angle. So if this slope is negative, the other slope has to be positive. So remember, you look at slope always from left to right. So if this slope is negative, this slope has to be positive. If this slope is positive, if the slope is positive, its perpendicular has to be negative. So two distinct lines are perpendicular if and only if they have opposite. So that guarantees that they're going to cross. One's going up and one's going down from left to right. But they just can't cross at any old angle. Like if I just took this and slid it over there, those two lines would be intersecting. They would have opposite slopes, but they wouldn't be meeting at a 90 degree angle. So not only do they have to have opposite signs, but they also have to have the slopes reverse. The rise and the run have to be flips of each other. So what do we call that in mathematics? A flipped over fraction, hopefully you remember, is a reciprocal. Slopes. So two distinct lines are parallel if and only if they have equal slopes. So the big takeaway, parallel means that you need equal slopes. And then the other big takeaway, perpendicular means you need opposite and reciprocal slopes. So let's put that to use now that we've got a couple of examples. Um, find the slope, that's important, slope intercept form. They, if they're telling you what form to use, you have to use that form. If they don't tell you that form, then you can pick whatever form you want is easiest. So I'm, we're stuck with doing y equals mx plus b. So we've got a point. Now we're parallel to this. So they told me a point, at the very least, for me to get any equation, I need a point and I need the slope. So we have a point, now we need to somehow use this to help us figure out the slope. Well, if I'm parallel to this, 
that means that my slope, my new slope, is going to be equal to this slope. But I don't know what the slope of this is in the current format because standard form doesn't help you figure out what your slope is. So I'm going to manipulate this algebraically to try to get y by itself so that it's in y equals mx plus b format. So I'm going to subtract the 2x over, 3y equals, and I like to put the 2x in front. Now it's negative because I moved it to the other side, and I like to put it in front so it's in y equals mx plus b form. Problem with this is that it's not equal to um, just y. It's got that 3 in front, so now I'm going to divide everything by 3. Divide by 3, divide by 3, and I figure out that the slope of this line I don't care that this 5 thirds. I only care about this part right here because that's what's connected to x. So the slope of this line is negative 2 thirds. Now that might be the slope that I want, but it's not necessarily the slope that I want. So I like to draw a little line to remind myself which slope I'm looking for. I'm looking for the parallel slope to this. Well, parallel slopes have equal, sorry, parallel lines have equal slopes. So we can say that this slope is negative two-thirds as well. All right, now that we have the slope and we have a point, we can start to plug into y equals mx plus b. y equals, do we know m? Yep, we just figured that out. x plus b. Now I need to figure out this b value, this y-intercept. We don't have that, but luckily, and this is a review of what we did last time, they, they gave me a point, which they gave me an x and they gave me a y. So I'm going to put y in for y, negative 1, equals, I already know it's negative 2 thirds. I'm going to put x in for x, so that's 2, plus b. Now we're going to start to clean this up. So this would be negative 1 equals, multiply, this is a fraction, so negative 4 thirds, plus b. Now i got to get b by it itself, so I'm going to add 4 thirds to both sides. Now this goes back to yesterday. If you can't do negative 1 plus 4 thirds in your head, that's fine. Go to the margin, some empty spot in the paper, and write negative 1 plus 4 thirds, and then think about what it takes to add those together. Well, this is a fraction, which means this has to be a fraction. To add fractions, I have to have common denominators, so I'm going to be lazy and just write it right over the top. Negative 3 over 3. So negative 3 thirds plus 4 thirds is positive 1 third. So 1 third is equal to b. And now I'm going to take those this b value and this slope, I'm going to put them together. y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 1 third. So this line, if you graphed it, and this line, if you graphed it, would be parallel lines. You try the next one. Pause it. Try the next one on your own. All righty, let's see how you did. And okay, so we've got a point again. We need to be perpendicular to this, so I'm going to use some math and magic to try to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract over the 6x, negative 5y equals negative 6x plus 8. Y is not by itself, so I'm going to divide by negative 5. And all I really care about here is trying to figure out what the slope is. So the slope is the stuff connected to X. So negative 6 divided by negative 5 turns out to be positive 6 fifths. Now, I always write myself a little note that I want to mess with that slope. I want to find out if the perpendicular slope or the parallel slope. So in this case, I want to figure out the perpendicular slope. Okay, two things have to happen. You have to switch the sign and you have to reciprocal it. This makes it go the opposite direction. This makes sure it meets at a 90 degree angle. So the opposite, this is a positive, so the opposite would be a negative. Six fifth reciprocal is five sixths. I saved that six. What do you think? All right, now from here, it's a matter of just plugging in the chugging. Let's do this one with um, point slope form, just to kind of mess around. You could do this again if you want to just repeat this process, but I'm going to do this one with point slope form since they gave me the point and they gave me a slope. So point slope form would look like y minus y, so that'd be y minus 3, 
equals slope, which we figured out was negative 5 over 6, times the quantity of x. Then I'm going to subtract my x, which is going to actually turn it into a positive 2. Okay, now they told us if this was just, if they said just find the equation, we'd box it in and we'd be done. But they told us they wanted it in slope-intercept form. So we need to do a little cleanup here. Math voice says the parentheses is the nastiest bit, so I'm going to clean that up first. Distribute, so I would get 9, negative 5, 6, x. This would be negative 5 over 6 over 2 over 1, so that would be negative 10 over 6. Now I know that's going to reduce but I'm going to probably wait to reduce that. I'm going to see what happens next. Eh, we could reduce it right now if we wanted to, because I know this is going to get, whatever. I'll, I'll reduce it at the end. So I need to add 3 to get y by itself. So y equals negative 5 over 6x. And now I need to do a little bit of work here. So I'm going to go into the margin again. So it's negative 10 over 6 plus 3. 3 is no good because it's not a fraction, so I'm going to make it into a fraction. they got to have a common denom, so I'm going to times this by 6. That's going to make this 18 over 6. So negative 10 plus 18 is 8 over 6. 8 over 6, of course, reduces to be 4 over 3. Remember, it's a standing order in this class. You must reduce. Even if it doesn't say, I expect you to reduce for full credit, plus 4 thirds. All right, pretty quick today, so that's it. Um, go get them.